Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today and open up to all the senses as creator of custom perfumes, Agata Carolina looks to make Africa a powerhouse of this premium industry. A new Durban waterside restaurant is a treat for all the senses. Touched by nature, Jessica Merle makes masterpieces of everyday cups and dishes. Embroidery is transformed into 3D art in the hands of J.C. Bolker. Feel the love as ballets Romeo and Juliet dance again. Women reimagine their potential in food, art and business. And stand a chance of winning a lifetime of hugs from this one-of-a-kind designer teddy bear. Here in Somerset West, contemporary embroidery artist J.C. Balker is proving that you can feel colour as much as see it. A visual arts teacher who has taught from Asia to the Middle East, he now travels through his works, finding their way into collections across the world. Hi there, Insider SA. Welcome to our unique. Follow me. My works are quite unique because nobody is doing it currently at this stage. People usually do machines. Nobody does hand embroidery, so I design them all from scratch. And it's about the uniqueness, and that's what the store is looking for. We try to make everything that we have here unique. We don't want to look like all the other stores. And that's why we support more than 40 artists in the store itself. I started doing my embroidery artworks back in China when I was stuck in lockdown. And was thinking, what am I going to do with myself? And when I came back to South Africa, I started selling it here. And within the first month, three of my works sold. And then I started getting invited to other galleries. My themes of work usually has to do with like masculine, feminine, and then also beauty. Uh, most of my works, you'll see I take parts out of the artworks, uh, like out of the face, out of the body. And it's just to highlight the things that people hide from themselves. So it's the hidden parts that we don't show each other. And when I remove these parts, it also makes the artwork look 3D when it hangs on the wall. So I will never have it framed with the backing. It will always be framed with glass in the front and glass in the back. So as you as a collector that you buy it, you can move it around and it will change the artwork based on the wall color or where you hang it. If sculpted figures invite touch and painted ones are to be enjoyed purely by the eye, embroidered work is a bridge between the two. The four pieces I currently have at Are Unique are Conqueror, which is done in blue and orange, and it was for a client who just conquered cancer. Ethereal was created with a red flower, Amarillo, and I usually include the meaning of the flower into the meaning of the artwork as well. Stained Glass Lady, when I edited her, she just looked like a woman who was captured in a church or in a stained glass window in a church. The last one that I created for my partner just captures the masculine and feminine energy. As he liked emotion that the person had in his face and it was also that combination of masculine and feminine with the florals on his head and then the masculine figure. So for me to create an artwork, I start by designing it on a coral draw and then removing the parts that I want to remove, changing the colors, how I want them or how the client wanted them. I print it out and then transfer it onto the paper, which you'll see on most of my objects while I'm still busy with it. I then start planning the colors and putting it into tonal values and then numbering my artworks. And then I'll place the tonal values according to the numbers. And when I'm done with that, I just embroider it. And then I work with cotton embroidery thread. When it's done embroidered, I remove the paper and then stretch it over a wooden frame that I have laser cut. And if I'm done embroidering the whole artwork, I just remove the paper and it gives me that 3D effect when it's hanging on a wall. So the obvious question is why embroidery? Painting for me takes too long. Not that embroidery doesn't take long enough, but <laughs> I find that this is more calming. It stresses me out less and it's more unique. When I create my art, it's like meditation and I focus just on the process and on creating the artwork itself. So it's just like yoga, but instead of yoga, it's art and embroidery. It is also earning a rightful place next to paintings, sculptures and prints as a formal category of art. 
currently have two artworks here, Enchanted and Enchantress. My two artworks that are here are linked to the group exhibition called Alchemy and to the magical side of it. So these two artworks link to my theme. Because I remove parts, it's also about the hidden parts that are part of magic that they hid as well in history. So I took that as inspiration to remove parts for this exhibition. As the word says, alchemy is a, a mixture of elements that produce something ultimately more magical, more beautiful. And we just thought putting all these artists together achieves exactly that. You, you, you get a synergy from all the pieces hanging together and the interaction between them and the way they play off against each other. Having my artwork here is like very exciting to me. As a self-taught artist and a contemporary artist, it's, I'm happy that people can see my works in a gallery like this. What Laduma Tokolo has achieved for Chosa Knitwear, may JC Bulker do for our local embroidery tradition. Strength to his hand. Coming up, ballet royalty star in Romeo and Juliet, and women reimagine their power through all five senses. Ballet danced to a live orchestra stimulates every sense, especially when it's Romeo and Juliet choreographed by the legendary Veronica Paper. Veronica Paper, who is the choreographer of Romeo and Juliet, is a former artistic director of Cape Town City Ballet. She's created many, many full-length works for the company. I decided that as part of my leadership of Cape Town City Ballet, that I wanted to restore in its original form as many of Veronica Paper's ballets as I was able to. To do. Veronica is very, very well known, most particularly for her Romeo and Juliet, and some people consider it to be one of the finest in the world. All of Shakespeare, I feel, has great potential for ballet because the stories are always so wonderful. I'm not so much a choreographer of steps, I'm a choreographer of emotions and storyline, and I much prefer that. I love to make audiences laugh or cry, and in Romeo and Juliet, they do both. They laugh in the first two acts, and they cry at the end, I hope. And I've enjoyed working with all the dancers, the local ones, and all these other wonderful dancers that have come from every corner of the world. So it's been a most incredible experience for me. Among those dancing the leads are Vadim Muntagirov and Fumi Kaneko, both principals of the Royal Ballet. So this is my first time visiting South Africa, uh, Cape Town, and I'm absolutely loving everything about this beautiful country. Everyone is so kind to us and feel very welcomed and so happy to dance here. There is some differences between European style of dancing and South African. So the dancers here are really hard workers. They have different repertoire, different schedules. And in a way here, the dancers feel maybe more secure, more relaxed. In Europe, sometimes we can get a bit nervous because we would get maybe two performances per production, which, for example, now we have four performances. So it would be equivalent of two seasons in uh, Royal Ballet. I found dancers here very confident, very happy being on stage, so I don't see that fear. And that kind of helps us as well, because we arrive here, sometimes we get a bit nervous because it's a new production, new people, but everyone very friendly here. And then when we get on stage, we see a good energy, which I really like about South Africa. Also taking the lead through until August 28 is Hannah Ward, making her debut in a principal role as Juliet. I feel incredibly privileged to be performing the role of Juliet. It's a role where it truly tells someone else's story. It's not the most classical Sleeping Beauty, Swan Lake, so it's something that I feel is not as daunting as a role like that, technically, but emotionally I feel a great responsibility to bring her character to life. Japanese dancer Fumi Kaneko brings an audience of 100,000 Instagram followers to every role. 
Juliet is such an innocent, pure girl. She always say yes to her parents, but then the moment she met Romeo, she fell in love with him. She never had that feeling before. She starts following her feeling, her gut, and the love, how much love can change yourself and how much strength love gives. For me, it's a big role that lives her life whole way through and become a strong woman. What I like about Romeo, when I'm performing this ballet and I have beautiful Juliet next to me, for three hours I go back to 16 years old boy. <laughs> it's such a romantic and energetic beginning of the ballet where Romeo just living his best life and then suddenly in three minutes his life changed completely. I found it quite interesting to switch from happiest time to the worst time. International ballet conductor Jonathan Lowe leads the Cape Town Philharmonic at select performances. Working with the brilliant musicians of the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra has been a real highlight of my last month or so here. They are such a bunch of hardworking musicians with real determination and grit, but of course artistry as well. Conducting Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet in Veronica Paper's production of this wonderful story is a bit of a marathon. It's interesting that I've done a few Romeo and Juliets, but they have all been made by male choreographers and having a Romeo made by a woman choreographer actually sheds a slightly different nuance into the characterization, particular into the personality of Juliet. Of course, the music is married so well with the drama. In Prokofiev's score, you've got harmonies that really gets your heart, and the results have been really enjoyable. The last few shows in particular have felt that there's a real spontaneity in our understanding with each other. It's been a real joy and a thrill. For this Veronica Paper Ballet that will dance right into your heart, catch the final week of Romeo and Juliet running at the Artscape Theatre Opera House until the 28th of August. Along with their famous intuition and unofficial sixth sense, women readily and actively engage in the world through all five senses. So in celebration of this holistic approach, we joined in a day designed to highlight the advantages of a multi-sensory way of living. I'm Robin, I am from Capitec Marketing. Uh, we are here today because Capitec Bank is celebrating Women's Month and our theme for today is Woman Reimagined and we will be rediscovering our five senses, touch, taste, sight, smell and hearing. Our activities for the day, we're going to be painting, we're going to have some awesome food, we're going to be entertained by a DJ and we'll be having masterclass talks. Appreciating and complementing creativity in everyday activities is a hallmark of how completely women take in their environment. And it makes Stacey Schilder's job a treat. My plea for today was to go with rustic, simple decor with a pop of colour. So what we went with on the tables are your earthy colours, which is your brown, your woven mats, you have the emerald green plates, we tied in the greenery centrepiece to match the plates, we added an emerald runner to fill up the table a little bit, and to add a modern aspect, we went with gold chairs. The sense that we aimed for was sight, for women to walk into a space and see all these beautiful chairs, the decor, they're entering into a different world. They're leaving home, they're coming here, their mindset changes, they are more relaxed, they feel glamorous, and that's why I love what I do. As does Chef Max Scaling, whose menu for the day prompted a hundred questions on what went into the aromas, flavors, textures, and finishes she'd created. I really wanted the core ingredients of each dish to shine so that the taste and smell of each specific ingredient can really be identified and enjoyed by the guests here today. So you'll see a lot of typical fresh vegetables being roasted kind of smells. We have breads that are going to be baked in the oven as people are here. So they're actually going to be taken along the whole journey while they're enjoying the whole experience. With a menu that got every taste bud watering, the guests were then inspired to each paint a canvas as part of a greater mural on the theme of the day. 
some undiscovered talents soon revealed themselves in Alan Mell's class. This activity is an engagement of the sense of sight. Also, just the tactile sense of actually pushing paint around and getting that feel of something flowing from a brush from your hand. If you're just used to being on a keyboard all day, it's a lovely tactile sense. Today I'll be taking the ladies on a journey where I'll be playing a bit of deep house and mid-tempo beats just to get their creative juices flowing. Then at the end of the session I will be incorporating some hip-hop and R&B, more sing-along tunes, commercial for them to end off their session and just enjoy the rest of their day. My artwork is going great. I'm feeling inspired. All my senses are tingling, my touch, I smell of the paint. It's amazing. As were a series of masterclasses reimagining women in business, meeting financial goals, having a side hustle, and generally being the X factor in society. The experience today was amazing. I feel like I have been invited to be amongst the greatest that is in our industry. The masterclass itself was so inspiring. I have reignited the little girl within me that just wants to take all opportunities that are available. All my senses have been, wow, have been fed, have been fulfilled. It was amazing. Reimagine women in your field or any field that you think would help all of South Africa to live better. Tell us how you would see that making the difference and stand a chance to win a thousand rand. Simply reply to the competition post on the Insider Essays social media platforms using hashtag Capitech Superwomen. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider Essay website. Just ahead, take a walk in the Feinboss with the women determined that Africa will lead the new world of perfumes. Sponsored by Capitec. A Polish aristocrat born in Cape Town, Agata Karolina had the choice to live and work anywhere. She chose South Africa and a career as a self-made creator of custom perfumes to showcase all of Africa. I grew up with a family that were producing tinctures and had apothecaries for the last 200 years in Poland. And from there, I was really interested in smell actually before I realized it. <laughs> I just spent my life really enjoying fragrances. And a lot of travels that I used to do as a kid and with my family in general were really connected with smell. The first one being when we were in Cairo when I was eight years old with my mom. And I remember one of the smells of the souks being so incredibly important and it's so visceral still till today. And that was something that really got me interested in working with smells. I'm inspired every day. Oh, it's a mix of people and of places. I really like people and being around them, but I also sometimes get overwhelmed. And I find nature to be a very big solace for me. It's a big part of why I moved back to South Africa and why I spend a lot of my time traveling. There's always a mix between city, people, and then also escaping into nature and finding that harmonious balance between both sides. And that's actually where I find most of my inspiration. Agata's perfumes are a geographic exploration of scent. My sense of smell is very particular. I smell everything, but my specific interests and how I've honed my nose to work is more on natural perspective. So I pay a lot of attention to the smells of nature, to what's happening in the air around me and what's happening with plants and how that really combines with people and the way that we actually all smell. I feel that to really grasp the essence of a place and of a person, you really have to experience it. So that's why my particular methodology in working is in fact to travel to the places that I'm creating the fragrance of. Because that way it's not only just about you know, smelling a plant or meeting a person or eating a food, it really is a combination of how that place makes you feel. Like how is it that the smell of a rose geranium makes you feel or the smell of ginger or a pepper? Like those aren't just fragrances, they actually are emotive connections as much as they are a pleasant smell. So it's finding how those kind of combinations of things together and the story which they are connected to and that memory which you feel about it, it's also translating that. 
Smell offers the most powerful connection with memory, time, and place. A key to unlocking a full sensory experience. Creating a scent for an individual versus creating it for a space or a place is a vastly different task for numerous reasons. One of them is that when you're dealing with a person from a chemistry side, it's many, many more ingredients which you're using to create that. You have different impacts, so skin, for instance, about someone's age, their race, their sex. The food that they eat is very great impact onto the way that different smells behave with our bodies. So when you're designing a fragrance for someone to wear, you really need to consider a multitude of factors of what is actually going to happen. When you're creating a scent for a space, on the other hand, you have to really consider not only the space itself, the people that live within it or are experiencing it, as much as the setting where it actually is. I also need to consider very often when I'm working, how does the smell move in space? I want it to be something that is very delicate, that it almost dances around in the air around you. And it's something you kind of pick up on the wind which is something that I prefer more. I don't personally like it when a place is stagnant with a fragrance. I like it when it feels like the air is moving around you all the time. I source my ingredients from all over the world, but particularly I do focus on sourcing from Africa. We work specifically with fully sustainable farmers and we're making sure that all of our ingredients are being farmed in a way which is fully sustainable and biodynamic as far as possible. And the reason for this is it's incredibly important for me that our products are created in a vertical manner. So we don't just buy from a supply without understanding where the ingredients are coming from, who are farming them, and also are they doing it in the correct way and making sure that these farming methods are done correctly and that the plants which we're working with will continue to be here for the future is highly important to me. Agata recently collaborated with a neuroscientist to explore how certain oils affect how we wake, realign, focus or rest. And it's been put into practice here. Future Found Sanctuary is a wellness retreat. This particular villa, Maison Noir, has a circular structure. Being a wellness retreat, this is where you need to come and de-stress, decompress, unwind from the daily stresses and strains. So with our opening doors and mountain backdrop and surrounded by trees and greenery, this is what our space does and that was the aim of it and I think it does it really well. Agatha is an amazing human being. We're so happy to have collaborated with her. Her sense just create those feelings of, of peace and rest and relaxation. And everyone that has smelt the fragrance mentions its uniqueness. And the fact that she's tapped into the local Feinbos makes it unique to South Africa, unique to the Western Cape, and particularly unique to our property. So she really has come up with something special. The Future Found Sanctuary is a project which is a very important project that I've been working on for the last two years. And I was brought on by Jim Brett, the owner, to create fragrances which had purpose. So instead of doing it from, let's say, a more beauty perspective in terms of fragrancing your body, it's truly about fragrancing space and how that actually affects the body. It's really important to me when designing a fragrance for a space or for an interior that we actually complement the fragrances which are currently existing in nature. Scent is incredibly important in spaces because I think what we've realized, especially over the last two years, is that the more time we spend in a place, we actually are much more aware of our surroundings. And having scent in a space allows us to either calm ourselves, to relax, and be more present. The Future Found fragrances we created focusing on four different indigenous plants which are growing on the property itself. And I wanted to create scents which are actually grounded in the gardens. So when you're in the space, in the sanctuary, moving between the villas, you're not only experiencing the fragrances in the spaces, in the spa, but also in the gardens themselves and how they're reacting to the body, to nature consistently throughout the day. So for Rise, the fragrance we decided to use is called the Cape Snowbush. For Realign, we are using the Rose Geranium. For the Reflect scent, we are using Impepo, which is known as Helichrysum Pitiolare. 
And that scent is very much used traditionally by Khoisan, which they're using for moments of spiritual connection with ancestors. They burn it in their huts to call ancestors into their dreams. And the very last fragrance is rest. And for the rest, we are using African wormwood. So that is, again, bringing on the peacefulness, quietening down the body and allowing you to move into sleep. To avoid impacting her work, Agatha wears no perfume during the week. A small sacrifice for a greater cause. I want to put Africa on the map as a serious competitor globally in terms of fragrance creation. No one really considers Africa as a player for not only just creating a perfume as a final product, but actually for the ingredients that we have here. And since so much of the indigenous plants which we have across the continent are so intricate and completely different from anything that's growing anywhere else in the world and has ever been used en masse and is quite new actually in terms of being utilized as an ingredient. My ambition basically is first and foremost to put Africa as a continent on the map for having incredible fragrance and on top of that hopefully put myself on the map globally um, for being Africa's best perfumer. The potential for our continent to benefit from this one woman's passion for perfume seems infinite. Right after this, a Durban eatery is a feast in every sense. And Jessica Merle Ceramics put us back in touch with nature. the crossroads of Durban's marine sights, sounds and flavours, a new restaurant has been catching the attention of the city's in-crowd. Serving original and imaginative cuisine along with delicious sunsets and waterfront views, it's the address on everyone's lips. Hi folks, my name is Juan Dile. I'm a manager for 9th Avenue. Please come in, let me show you around. The so Ninth Avenue was established in 2019 by the Onassis International. The whole purpose of them establishing this place was to uplift the community as well as the building itself because the building was lying quite empty for a very long time. This will be our main dining area and we've decided to go with an open plan kitchen so the customers can interact with the chefs and the chefs can also interact with the customer as well as the chef having a beautiful view of the harbour himself. And on this side here, we've decided to bring a lot of lighting and we've kept the furniture quite light and fresh and very strict in order for us to enjoy the view as well as to bring in the nightlife as well as the boat lights from the outside. So one of our highlights here at the main dining area will be our hanging lights. The whole concept was this is for it to go with the beautiful ambience and the lighting is actually soft and very subtle, hanging over our customers while they're enjoying the beautiful meals. Last but not least, we have these beautiful fans brought in from Nisner to keep the area quite cool in the hot summer days in Durban. Here we have our private dining area. So what we've done here with the deco was to bring in this beautiful oak table as well as these beautiful paintings behind me here. And then we've also got our wine cellar behind us there. That's got a bit of a wide range of different wines, uh, homemade and international. And to finish it off, we've also got a beautiful range of champagnes. The Waterside Restaurant has come to the attention of prominent local businesswomen as the perfect lunch date. I am Zama Kaba, Mrs. Mabaso. Hi, and I'm Noni Kaba. Zama and I enjoy a lot of shopping. We love fashion. Like, when you talk about fashion, that's us. And also, one thing about Zama and I, our friendship is also very spiritual. We connect as spiritual sisters. Zama is my prayer partner. We always <laughs> pray together. And we just love everything that we do together. And we also love going out, dining. And that's why we're here. With cooking, my gran is an exceptional cook. She's 91 this year, and all the cooking that I know, I've learned it from her. And within that, food has just become my comfort zone because I absolutely love delicious, tasty food. Oh, nice. Wow. I love this hanging you display. You finally arrived. So beautiful. Uh, I love the 
entire setup of this place. It actually looks like like a boat house. I feel like it's, it's a very relaxed environment. It's not too much, but it's so tranquil. I absolutely love it. And I just wish we had more restaurants like this around in Durban. This Look is gorgeous! This. Oh my wow. God. I haven't been here literally like in two years. You know what? Actually, you came today at the right day because these days have been so gloomy. And today the weather is like so perfect. And it's sunny. Ooh. It's so, so beautiful. Wow. Ooh. Executive chef Andile and Glovu's kitchen supports sustainably farmed food, offering Durban's local and international guests the proudest South African produce from across the country. Today I'm preparing Uzam and a friend of King Clip from Cape Town. Freshly came in today. First thing I'll set my fish and sear it in a pan with the garlic butter and some herbs. And that's gonna go with the parsnip puree, roasted carrots braised onion and some greens, baby corn and uh, corn fit baby potatoes. My second dish will be duck. Uh, with the duck, I've got uh, carrots and cumin puree, corn fit duck croquettes with uh, some greens, dark jus and a uh, pom paolo. The duck breast will be cured and our duck leg is corn fit in the oven for like one hour, 45 minutes. So we corn fit the duck leg and we shred it and we braise it for, for like 15 minutes and we add cream cheese and it's called in crumbles. Well, the pleasures of wining and dining is that you also get to escape the hustle and bustle of your everyday life, where you're mostly relaxed and in an environment that's also welcoming and warm. And also the importance of just choosing the service as well, because you've got a variety of restaurants all over, but where you get the best service and the food that is doable for you, that's what I find it, it, it really works well. The sights and textured surrounds had set the scene, but the flavors, hands down, stole the show. The duck was cooked to perfection. It was succulent, it was tasty. Absolutely loved the reduction that they used for the duck. The veggies were blanched to perfection. I just feel like everything complements each other within the meal that they've created for us. Absolutely amazing, I really loved it. I really enjoyed the king clip. It was absolutely delicious. Um, it was nice and soft, and I just enjoyed everything about it. <laughs> to be honest with you, the food is amazing here. I wouldn't really not change anything. In fact, I'll come back over and over again. This tale had one more twist. Good day, ladies. Once again, welcome to 9th Avenue. My name is Sylvia, head mixologist of the house. So today we're going to be doing some cocktails. I'm going to be doing a nice watermelon flavor for you, my good lady. Some uh, infused with pineapples. Also a little bit of a hint of uh, some vanilla syrup. So for you, my good lady, I'm going to do a passion fruit flavored uh, cocktail. Put some passion fruit, elderflower, just to get the freshness going with it and balance it off with some lemon juice and also some pineapple. We're going to be shaking, so it's very simple. You're going to hold it right there. Okay. You, get a, you know? Okay. And shake. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I love the taste of the passion fruit. So refreshing. The watermelon. The watermelon is a big hit and it's balanced, it's not too sweet, not sour, just perfect balance. Yeah, so cheers to you, ladies. Yes. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> cheers. The perfect note to sign off on. Durban has faced a lot this year, and we wish her more of this renewed hope, enterprise, and success. Artists have shaped their ideas of the world around us in clay for centuries. Dedicated to this hands-on form of expression, Jessica Merle says clay takes her everywhere and she is its happy follower. I'm Jessica. I'm a ceramist and artist based in Hillcrest KZN. Join me in the garden and my studio to see how my creative process unfolds. I'm currently working on the Alchemy Collection, which is a series of sagophied functional ceramics. The intention with this collection is to create pieces that overlap art and utility. We were keen to understand how this artist fires pieces of natural design directly into her clay. 
I like to think that one of my hidden talents is being able to observe and spot the small secret things that are hidden in nature around us, such as shed snake skins, empty eggshells, feathers, anything like that that I can incorporate into the Sago firing process and to create a beautiful, organic, smoky finish in my work. I'm very lucky to find a shed snake skin here in the garden. It's been here a little while, parts of it are missing, but it's all very natural. All of these small elements, these shed and left behind pieces of nature will go into the sagas I create and leave an almost perfect ephemeral impression of the snake skin. What I love about working with nature is that it almost brings an energy to my process. I feel like when I start a new batch of work, just having these elements around me brings a sense of excitement and as soon as that spark hits, I have to get into the process of making straight away so I can start using these in my surfaces, the textures, packing sagas to see how each piece, each element is going to react and interact in the firing. Nature is bountiful in inspiration and it's always sharing so much. All we have to do is go outside, get quiet and really look around and engage with our environment. The first thing to do is prepare the clay. So what I'll do is cut off sections of it and wedge it up on the table and get it nice and ready to use. I use only hand building techniques in my work. So I'll either use the pinching method or I'll use slab building to create certain works. Once the slab has been rolled out, I just smooth it down using a soft rubber tool just to make sure that the surface is nice and smooth and it makes cleaning it up after the saga firing a lot easier. Now we're going to drape the slab over the plaster mold. I'll trim away the excess clay around the edge and then leave it to firm up. So one of the great things about slab building is that all of the excess clay around the edge of the mold can actually be wedged up immediately and used for your next piece. Every piece is shaped in Jessica's hands and fired by her imagination as much as the heat of a kiln. So the process for building the cup forms is a little different from creating the bowls. I cut components of clay from the slab and then work to join them together to create the final cup form. These are pre-measured templates that I use to create every Hebe cup. And then I know it's the right proportions, the perfect size to fit in your hand. And I know that everything's gonna join up. Once everything has dried enough to what we call bone dry, it goes into the electric kiln for vitrification firing. Once they've been fired in the kiln, I'll then go ahead and pack sagars around them. And that is where a lot of the natural organic elements come in. So each piece will be individually wrapped with a number of different elements around it. Either snakeskin wrapped around, feathers, leaves, flowers, all together. And then I wrap that up with tin foil. From there, these go into the barrel fire. This is the final firing of the process to create the Sagar Fired Works. This is where the magic truly happens. All of the organic elements that were packed into the Sagars are now burning away and depositing carbon into the surface of the clay. After the fire's gone down, I'll take the works out, unwrap the Sagars, see how everything's fired. Then they'll go through a final cleaning, dry out, and they'll be sealed to make them waterproof and food safe. The encouragement of a circle of female artists and friends has been a major influence and so is the support of clients like Karen Price Lewis. I first met Karen in 2020 when she found my work via Instagram. She messaged me to buy this first piece, the butterfly dish, and it's also a very significant example of how well insects can take in the sagar firing and this has left this perfect smoky impression of a butterfly's wing which we just both absolutely love. The 
pieces that Karen has in her home are all from the Alchemy Collection, which is a series of Sagar fired functional wares. She also has two of my pieces that I created early in my career that speak to landscape, the mountains I used to see on my travels to the studio. And so it's quite interesting to see works from different sides of my career displayed in the same place. What I love about Jess's work is the fact that Jess brings nature into her ceramics and how it just actually sings to me and it's just so much more special. The workmanship that's gone into it is just incredible. It's important for me to achieve in each piece a level of imperfection and uniqueness. I don't want it to look polished and perfect and machine made. It needs to have the touch of hands on there. It needs to show the mark of the maker. Best of all is for Jessica to know that her ceramics bring joy to people in these everyday rituals of their lives. Still to come, because we can always do with a hug, stand a chance to win your own unique designer teddy bear. Sponsored by Capitech. During COVID restrictions, Joburg-based travel consultant Kim Lings had a brainwave. Thinking about how to stay in touch with cherished people in our lives, the idea of memory bears came to her as a way in which people can connect. Welcome guys, my name is Kim Lings, I'm the owner of Infinity Bears, welcome to our studio. I started Infinity Bears in April last year, I've been in travel for the last 21 years and once COVID started obviously travel was affected and I had no work to do. I then started to clean out cupboards like a lot of people did in COVID and then I sold some of my items and Unfortunately, a friend of mine had a tragic loss of a son in January last year. And I was lying in bed one night thinking how awful it must be. And I thought, imagine if he had something to hold. The comfort it would bring, I thought, teddy bears. Everybody loves a teddy bear. And that's what gave me the idea of starting Infinity Bears. From when we're babies to old age, touch is one of the most comforting senses. And teddy bears are always up for a hug. This is the first bear I made. Obviously had no idea what I was doing, but it gave me a good insight into the design we were gonna be ultimately looking for. To turn her idea into reality, Kim approached Jackie Raymond to be her creative director. It was a job offer like no other. I embarked on this journey with Kim because uh, she approached me looking for a someone to sew, put together the bears, and I love a challenge and I love fabric and sewing, and so it was the best of both worlds. So Jackie and I got together, and this was the first bear that Jackie put together. We called him Jake, and he is incredibly special because he's named after the little boy that passed away. Now this little bear is incredibly special to me. It's called Mama Bear, and this was made for my mom from the clothes that she used to wear. This is how it all started, was with memory bears, from clothing that clients would give to us, and we would then make a bear special to them. And then we wanted to do things a little bit more fun, so came up with the idea of doing the same bear with the same pattern, but incorporating something special, like authentic designer items, such as scarves, clothing, or handbags. Each is as personal as the sentiment behind it. They've even made bears from uniforms to remember happy school days. So when we get an order for one of our bears, the memory bears especially, that's material that's supplied by our clients. So we take great care with that. A lot of respect goes into the whole process because those clothing items are very special to people. And then obviously with our designer bears, we have a little bit more leeway with that. But at the end of the day, we want a bear to be cuddly, to look like it's made with love. The specialness of each bear for me is that they are absolutely unique and each are actually handcrafted, so it's a work of art. 
for the Seamstress team, bringing Kim's original designer bear concept to market has been most satisfying. I am a seamstress, so I do the sewing, the cutting out, the laying out of the patterns, and I love to see the end result. No two bears are the same, no fabric is the same. What I love most about this job is just the challenge. It is a new thing. I've never really done bears, so it's quite a wonderful place to venture. I get to see all the wonderful textures and the wonderful fabrics that we use to make the bears, so I really like that. For a ready supply of authentic pre-loved brand name handbags, scarves and jeans to make the designer bears, Barbara Markovitz can't be beat. So Kim knows exactly what she wants when she walks to the store. She has an intention of which bear she will be making next and she comes in with a purpose to buy a designer brand or an authentic bag. I saw quite a few nice things on Instagram and I'm also looking for something a little bit different, not just the handbags. So I want to look for maybe a nice top. This is quite yeah, nice. Yeah, so that print is stunning. It's got that. Yeah, that's also stunning. This is also coming. This is quite cool for the bears. Very nice. Because we've got that little print. I've never used it in grey. And then we've also got this, the little Burberry keyring. This is a lot of fun. I also like that we can use all the... Detail. All the detail. I think you've sold me. You're taking those two? I think I'm going to take those two and okay, this backpack. Awesome. As for marketing, it was a personal connection which brought social media manager Brett Phillips on board. I stumbled upon this page selling teddy bears and I saw that they were making teddy bears out of old clothes, things that belong to people and I thought to myself, I've got a bag at home that belonged to my late gran, so I thought this was the perfect opportunity. We then met. I was telling another client about Kim. There's this amazing lady who's making teddy bears out of people's memories. And she said to me, hang on a second, Kim Ling's, I know where she lives, I told Kim that I run this lady's social media and that was it. Kim said to me, you're running my Instagram page. And since then, I've been the social media manager for Infinity Bears. To be irreplaceable, one must be different. And that captures the spirit of each bear. I loved the fact that it was such a labor of love that each bear is handmade and unique. It's recycling memories. I can now pass this bear on to my children one day and they'll know about my grandmother. The bear is very special to those buying it because it's got so much sentiment behind it. And you really do trust in Kim and the team to take apart the old bag, clothes, whatever you give to Kim to come out with something as special as this. Thank you for tuning in and seeing behind the scenes on how we create these amazing luxury bears. To celebrate, we've teamed up with the Insider SA, where we'll be giving away Remy. Details will be on the social media pages. Made from an original designer handbag and scarf, Remy the Bear comes with his own certificate of authenticity. Log on to our Twitter, Facebook or Instagram for details. Join us again next week as we're behind the scenes in every moment that led to Limpopo Zindavi Nokiri being crowned Miss South Africa 2022. Get more of the Insider Essay online. Follow, connect, engage and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 6, repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.